Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Stray Pixels podcast, where I would like to announce that I uh, I am boycotting uh, the Stray Pixels podcast, and I ask that all of our listeners do, too. Uh, I was only offered the average salary of the uh, American U.S. retail worker uh, in exchange for five weeks of work uh, in, in, for, for doing this podcast, and that's, frankly, that's insufficient to me. Um, I, I I think that that I should be given a lot more than that for five sessions of 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 work. Um, but you know, uh, you can take the money that you would have given to this podcast and donate it to this company that puts up annoying billboards that uh, try and promote pro life messages uh, in America where I don't live. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't have a lot to say about the Helen Taylor thing. Uh, certainly not enough to make it its own entire topic. But yeah. uh, yes, we were paying attention. Uh, yeah. Yes, the entire thing is a shit show. Uh, no, I don't. I don't really want to talk that much about. It. Uh, welcome to the Straight Pixels podcast. I am your host, Noisy Pixel staff writer Colin Buchanan, and I am joined as usual by my co-host, staff writer Nathan Mejia. How are you doing this week, Nate? Uh, this week's been a wild ride for me. Uh, I put out two reviews this month, and I'm working on my third. Um, uh, which kind of bleeding into November now because it was a, a much less anticipated title. Let's just say that one. Uh, and then I got back into Final Fantasy fourteen after weeks of playing what? Unite because um, I'm finally ready to be uh, social again, which that's a rare rarity in this day and age for me. I was I was supposed to have a game to, to be reviewing right now. Uh, I can't say which one. Uh, I probably can... Once this ep- by the time this episode comes out, but I'm covering my butt anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so th- this game was dropped into our review request channel like a month ago, uh, and <laughs> Azaria finally heard back from uh, their PR team that the PlayStation keys, which is what I asked for, uh, are delayed until after launch. Wow, that's weird. Why specifically the PlayStation keys? I don't know. That I don't know. That screams like something on the PlayStation end is broken. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that's irritating. That is. Um anyway, good thing PR people don't listen to this podcast. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's a good thing most people don't listen to this podcast. Ayo. The well, yeah, we get like what, like a thousand listens a week which is pretty good which that's, is pretty good for a podcast good. that's only been around for a year from people who uh previously didn't do anything so yeah 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 i'll take that no no it's not the um, worst thing we got like active listeners there's always lozy Lozy's always there yes, for us we love you lozy uh i'm not i'm not gonna be like azario shouting out all the commenters that aren't subscribed i'd like the people that are subscribed and that are in our uh noisy pixel community discord server where mm-hmm. lozy puts in uh, a ton of work coming up with with uh, a new uh bgm track for us every day of the freaking week because yeah. he's a hero <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it's well, it's been like core games this entire month i know I, i've seen some resident evil tracks up in there uh when trails was getting uh, released last month he was putting a bunch of trails music um it, it's kind of really cool and i i would hope more people in the community or even one of us would do it more but i don't have time and people generally seem to lurk in our community discord more often than not no we have active communication we totally do we, we, do, we do it's just active between <laughs> so <laughs> Moving, moving to our ap- actual topic of oh, the week. Um, our actual topic of the week. Uh, so the besides the 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 Bayonetta three thing, which is kind of old news at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that the biggest news of this week, aside from the Call of Duty thing, which isn't really enough to talk about for forty minutes, mm-hmm. um, was the Callisto Protocol developer has announced that it is no longer releasing the game in Japan because yep. the Japanese ratings board Sarah uh rejected the game and and there would have needed to like they were they had already changed the game for for Japan because there's yep. a lot of things that you just straight up cannot do in Japan yep. uh for for video games and they said nope we're still not taking it and uh the the team was like oh well we don't really want to change this anymore so sorry i guess we're just going to refund all japanese pre-orders yeah yeah which you know is disappointing but you know uh 
Japanese fans can still import from America and get the uncensored version, which I know um, some fans said they had to do for Resident Evil 2 anyways, because Resident Evil 2 also had to have a bunch of uh, changes because uh, there's a lot of, you know, uh, mutilation of bodies and stuff, which is in Japanese culture right now, not very cool thing to depict in video games. Um, I think Abron's research shows it was um, a mixture between, you know, old samurai traditions and that there was a, a killing with dismemberment and beheading that they don't, that they think is very insensitive to, to bring up the media. Mm hmm. And I mean, there's, you know, just sticking with Japan for a second, because we're going we're going broad here. I want to oh, talk yeah, about yeah. a bunch of different places, but just oh, sticking yeah. with Japan here, there's a couple of really interesting ones. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, uh, in the Japanese version of Fallout 3, you cannot blow up the the nuke in Megaton. Um, mm -hmm. They 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 have already uh, they, they had already changed the name of of uh, the fat man for obvious reasons to the yeah. nuke launcher. Yeah. Um, but you 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 cannot. <laughs> you can, I, as far as I am aware, uh, you cannot even access the Ten Penny Tower uh, quest line in the Japanese version of Fallout Three because you cannot make the nuke explode in uh, Megaton. Oh, wow. um, the the other uh, really interesting one. Uh, so Japan is is really really uh, uh, scrutinous of yeah. of people with criminal history. And yes, especially yes. when that relates to drugs. Yes. Um, so when uh, Pierre Taki, who was a comedian who uh, was an actor and mocap provider for the original Judgment game, uh, was arrested for suspicion of, of uh, cocaine, uh, mm -hmm. cocaine usage, uh, Judgment was, was uh, completely pulled from store shelves. And I don't yeah. even think that it was legal. I think that Sega specifically were like, mm, we don't we yeah. don't want this uh we don't want this coming back to us right yeah, now yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and the yakuza series has a big history of doing that uh there, there's always been another two actors uh from yakuza 4 the original actor who mo for uh the cop character mm -hmm. he got caught with drugs and they automatically uh they didn't pull it but any subsequent releases they changed the actor completely um it's also why in the fifth game out of all the returning characters from four, he was the only one not present and why you got yep. the baseball character. Yep. Uh, which I like that character better anyways, but that's a personal thing. I mean, none of them are ever coming back now anyway, nope. I'm sure. Oh, no. <laughs> so it don't really matter anymore. Um, and uh, God, I can't remember. I think it was in six, one of the actors got caught. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, but one of the actors got caught, and and it was just DLC. They just here's an update. The that character is no longer in here, and all and all secret uh, reprints of the game. If it had featured box art, the character changed the character. <laughs> so it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Um, yeah. if if you have any inclination of doing anything with drugs, don't go to Japan. Don't live in Japan. Yeah, it's don't, it's don't. a bad place for this. It's, uh, it's, it's a very it's very very bad. Um, even weed is looked very very down upon. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, um, but going going a uh, very very short distance to the south, uh, another place where we hear about games getting uh getting banned fairly frequently uh mm -hmm. is australia and i was hoping yeah. to have uh pyro mads here but unfortunately neither of them were um available but yeah yeah they their their ratings board is really strict yeah. um especially when it comes to violence and again drugs um fallout 3 going back to that was originally banned because you could get positive uh po you could receive positive effects from doing drugs in the game because you get you obviously the the mm -hmm. the chems uh all carry a positive benefit that is offset by the risk that your character becomes addicted to them uh and they didn't like that there was a positive effect of using drugs yeah. uh so nope um and uh there's also just games that get you know content uh 
high impact violence, uh, Postal One and especially Postal Two, yeah, uh, were were banned for a good long time for this reason. Um, what else? Uh, Left 4 Dead Two. Left 4 Dead Two was banned in Australia, uh, and had to be uh, uh, hmm. re-edited for uh germany and then that version got got mm -hmm. re-rated by by the australian ratings board uh mm -hmm. for it to get overturned yeah um but it it's so hang on i i have i have the list of okay. of, or of of reasons why games can be refused classification in australia okay, okay uh detailed instruction or promotion in matters of crime or violence uh, de cool. depiction of rape depiction okay, okay. not not even glorification just depiction. depiction yeah uh the promotion or provision of instruction in p word activity if i say this i get we get demonetized okay. um uh description or description or uh, descriptions or depictions of csa or any other exploitative or offensive descriptions or depictions involving okay. a person who is or appears to be uh, that part's important mm -hmm. a child under 18 years uh, uh Australia does not like bathing suit DLC. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, gratuitous, exploitative, or offensive depictions of violence with a very high degree of impact, which are excessively frequent, prolonged, or detailed. Cruelty okay. or real violence, which are very detailed or which have an extremely high impact. Again, this is kind of vague. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or sexual violence. Uh, depictions of practices such as... Uh, I don't know what word I can put here. I'm going to say doing things with animals and y'all are going to know what i'm what i'm talking about but uh, okay. they just say practices such as and then the list ends there so i don't i don't know what else goes there yeah, um yeah. and then gratuitous exploitative or offensive descriptions of activity accompanied by fetishes or practices that are offensive or abhorrent mm -hmm. and again a word i can't say uh doing things with family members fantasies or other fantasies that are offensive or abhorrent mm -hmm. um there is literally an entire Wikipedia page just for games banned in Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which, which is which is kind of funny and always sucks about for me is that uh, here in America, the our ESRB does not have this power. They cannot ban games outright. Um, they can rate it as AO, which effectively kills it here, but that's not really banning it because. Well, here's the th here's mm -hmm. the thing is that like in in America, yes, we have the AO rating, um, yeah. but it used to be that that was a death sentence because yeah. uh, certain retailers, most notably Walmart, would yeah. refuse to carry your game. And this was back in a time when uh, obviously all we had was physical physical yeah. games. Yeah. So if a big retailer decided they didn't want to carry your game, you were you were cutting off a huge uh, portion of your potential profits. Yep. Yeah. Nowadays, now we have uh, the 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 uh, much talked about uh, uh, Sony censorship, where yeah. if Sony feels like uh, your game is skewing a little bit too close to uh, child s material, again we're yeah, yeah. skirting around. I'm I'm not I'm not going all in on on demonetization this episode. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, they will they will force you to censor their game. There's there's a couple games that are uh, only censored on PlayStation for this reason. Like uh, Labyrinth Life was was released as Omega Labyrinth Life everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. So that, um, that was always a weird one to me. And then, then sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say because that game really isn't that racy for what it is. <laughs> yeah, this guy is way worse. Yeah, this guy uh, is way, like way, a way, way worse. Times worse. <laughs> um. And then uh, Nintendo very recently decided that mm -hmm. their their whole you know haven for games that are getting censored elsewhere they don't yeah. want to do that anymore. Uh, yeah, they yeah. they also they also don't want any boobies on their on their eShop. Yeah, uh, yeah. except for uh, ones that are attached to Bayonetta, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're they're not very. Like, but even then, uh, I think they they mandated there's two different uh, modes for. Uh, thing I think uh, I can't remember if it was actually called Cherry Mode if that was the joke, <laughs> uh, where it kind of censored her, and that's what the trailers were showing, and that's why everybody was like, "Wait, hold up, she's not. This isn't the same." And it's because they were using that mode for the trailers. Um, but she still gets fully naked, and again, it wasn't that racy of a game. Mm -hmm. it, it was like, "Oh, she's getting naked," and then. Oh, all you see is the back where her long flowing hair gets in the way of most everything. 
So, um, moving back around the world because yeah. America is one of the least interesting places to talk about this with. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, in uh, let's go back to Germany. Germany is an interesting one. Um, Germany has a uh, basically a total cultural ban on yeah. uh, what they call use of symbols of unconstitutional organizations, which basically yeah. means you can't have uh, swastikas anywhere. Yeah. Yep. Um, any any reference to that has to get edited out. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's a whole bunch of games that are uh, uh, banned for both that and or extreme depictions of violence uh yeah. like uh the condemned games uh are are still banned there um wolfenstein i hope cuz yes is... wolfenstein is banned um <laughs> wolfenstein eventually got re-released i don't know if i remember correctly this mm. only applied to the 7th gen 1 the one before we got the the reboot with uh, uh okay, okay uh Bob. That happened last gen. I don't remember the name of the game. Uh, a new beginning and uh, all no, that. No, uh, new order. Yeah, new order. New order. Yeah. Um, and then a whole bunch of Mortal Kombat games were originally banned and then got edited and then yeah, got released. Yeah. Um, but that's that's one of those like it's it's a really intense uh, censorship of one very specific thing that Germany just does not want associated with it anymore yeah, for yeah. very obvious reasons for very uh, obvious reasons that's why you can't throw people in an ovens much more much more valid reasons i would say than uh the reason why china bans a lot of games hey, uh Pooh bear is a very hard working government official over there there's there's the uh there's there's one really really famous one that uh <laughs> we could talk about for a while uh, and that is Devotion, a game that got banned in China so hard that it was banned everywhere yeah. uh, for a time. Um, so <laughs> Devotion Devotion is a horror game um, that was... Uh, uh, it's, it's a very psychological horror game. Uh, about generational trauma yes. in in uh, in in Taipei in China, and yeah. uh, it was right on the verge of being released. And someone discovered one of the assets in the game was, uh, I think, a little piece of in-game graffiti yeah, uh, yeah. that translated in Chinese to uh, it, it was either Pooh Bear Xi Jinping or Xi Jinping Pooh Bear. Yeah. Uh, Winnie the Pooh is banned in China uh, because mm -hmm. Xi Jinping's feelings get hurt because people apparently like to compare him to Winnie the Pooh yeah. um, because he's like Winnie the Pooh for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah. And so uh, not only was it immediately banned in China, but CD Projekt, mm -hmm. uh, as as owners of, of GOG.com, GreatOldGames.com, yeah. um, were, were actually going to release the game in uh, America and apparently received enough complaints that they canceled that release. And yes. so the game's entire American launch was was absolutely fucked. Yeah. Um and uh it it took it took more than a year. It took more than a yeah. year for this game to finally be able to come out. Um yeah, and I, I still think it's still kind of hard to to get like you have to do kind of work around, right? Or you have to. Um, I think you still have to go to their website to, to yeah. Red Candle's website. Yeah. Um, I don't actually. I should probably look that up. Yeah, yeah. This is this um, was a big deal, and I, I remember looking at this game and being very excited for it. And you, you know, it, it sucks because something like that was either a a joke thrown in by one of the developers, or b kind of there for realism's sake. Okay. Okay. Um, Devotion is not available on Steam. Its soundtrack is as DLC for a game that is not listed. Oh. Like, literally, so you can, you know, go yeah. try this at home. If you, if you type in Devotion into the store search bar, you pull up the soundtrack for the game, and it says downloadable content. This content requires the base game uninitialized on Steam in order to play. Huh. Which is which is Steam programmer lingo for this game doesn't exist. Yeah, it, what it really means is that that's a placeholder for when a variable is null. It just says uninitialized instead of airing out the website. Um, <laughs> a, apparently, um, a, apparently, 
people people have tried to review bomb it um but there's mm -hmm. also a lot of people who have actually left uh reviews that are effectively reviews of the game um <laughs> which i guess if you can't review the game why yeah. not it's got it's got mixed overall but again i'm assuming that it that it's getting uh review bombed it, it's probably by, by the ccp re reviewed bombed both ways people you know people who are like no this is bullshit and people who are well, okay both sides are no this is bullshit but my reason is because china is bullshit and my reason is because developers bullshit um and for people who don't know, the Chinese um, pro-nationalist movement over there is very, very powerful, very, very strong, and very, very vocal. Um, even in the VTuber world, uh, they they managed to get uh, a very popular VTuber um, completely canceled and lost uh, her her sponsorship from Hololive, and in fact, effectively killed Hololive in China. I mean, that one was kind of a matter of time. <laughs> yeah, but for people who don't know, it was because looking at fucking statistics from Twitch fucking said, oh yeah, Taiwan is a country because by everywhere else except for China, Taiwan is its own. No, not Taiwan. Not Taiwan. Oh my, I feel so bad. I have a friend who's from this place. Hong Kong, Taipei, not, Hong Kong, not Taipei, Singapore. Uh, it's it's a it's an island off of off of China, and, and China considers it part of it. It's not Taiwan though. It's a uh, maybe it is Taiwan. I have a, fr I have a friend who who literally immigrated from there, and I feel so bad that I cannot remember his country of origin. <laughs> Are you looking it up right now? I am. <laughs> uh, uh, country China so claims. I believe in you, Nate. I believe it. Okay, well, the Philippines, not Nepal, huh? India, not Indonesia. Wow. China just says, hey, this is all ours, don't mm -hmm. they? Yep. Yep. That's, uh, that's a, that's a can of worms. Yeah. Um, I'm afraid of getting flagged if I if I speak too much more on that. Uh, let me let me see. Uh, not now, Twitter. Not now. Okay. No, no, it was Taiwan. It was Taiwan. <laughs> After all that, after all that, it was for me to say yes. It was Taiwan. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Well. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm, no, you're fine. I've got. I've got my next. My next. Yeah. Uh, my next thing. Oh. Um. So this is gonna. This is gonna seem like it's going off topic for a second, but I promise you, it's not. Okay. Nate. Yes. You were on the internet. You've been on the internet for a while. We're both. Yeah. We're both pretty terminally online people. Do you remember the Momo challenge? No, not off the top of my head. You'll have to remind me. So the Momo challenge was supposedly a, a viral challenge that was going around on uh, platforms meant to be used by children where uh -huh. a girl with a really scary looking face supposedly would give oh. you lists of things that you had to do for her. Oh. And a lot of them supposedly involved harming yourself uh, until she, like, told you to kill yourself or something. Yes, yes, um, yes. Here's the thing about the Momo challenge. Uh, it doesn't, it didn't exist. It, it, it was made up by someone, uh, and then it was thrown out into the, the uh, culture war fight 
uh, mm-hmm. and promoted by a bunch of conservative uh, conservative news outlets to to try and terrify parents the same way that we have uh, uh, litter boxes in American public schools right now as as a as as the hoax du jour. Um, and uh, what you may not know is that uh, Eurasia ha- had its own one of these, uh, and it was called the Blue Whale Challenge. Mm. Uh, supposedly, it was it was a a social game where uh, a a an administrator would give you a series of fifty t- or fifty days worth of tasks. Uh, a lot of them mm-hmm. uh, they would start out normal. And then eventually they'd tell you to start hurting yourself. And then the last challenge was to was to unalive yourself. Yep. Um it will not surprise you to learn that uh claims of this were completely unsubstantiated. However, yeah. uh several people several people were uh caught and admitted to using the idea of this uh to to make people do it, but there's no there's no evidence given that it was ever actually a a widespread problem. Yeah. However, there are several countries where uh to this day there are video games that are banned because they were supposedly used in this challenge. Uh Ooh. most notably uh uh Saudi Arabia still has all the Assassin's Creed games banned um originally uh the first game was banned for uh, a brief period of time because they thought yeah. it would be a a negative portrayal of of arabs it's really it, not it's, it's a pretty really not. It, it's a pretty sensitive depiction uh honestly speaking uh it, if and, anything and... it portrays um the arab people very very kindly and white um crusaders very negatively (laughs) like keep in mind that in the assassin's creed games the overarching bad guys are are effectively insane christian nationalists yeah like analogs for that so um yeah i don't i did that that there was not it it was not that big of a deal um but they also have the metro the metro games banned for this reason and the witcher 3 banned for this reason (laughs) Why specifically The Witcher 3, I don't though? know. You wouldn't think that that would fit into 50 days worth of tasks, would you? No. <laughs> no, because it takes at least 200 just to do any one thing in Witcher 3. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that they're remaking Witcher 1? I am, and I'm kind of excited for it, because uh, Witcher 1, while it holds up pretty well, I would like to see it off of just computer. <laughs> uh, It came out on xbox 360 didn't it no oh. that was just two that was just two and three yeah mm. it's also horrifically unoptimized and it runs oh. like shit yeah yeah no like while it holds up like story-wise and kind of sort of gameplay wise everything else is kind of like oof. like i don't like that's why when people are like oh my god cd project red they're gonna be the next coming up christ i'm like did, did you play the witcher one did you play the witcher two before they fixed it did you play The Witcher 3 before they fixed it? Because <laughs> they, they are a... Well, I'm getting off call it, but they are perfectly in that sound jank level where they get a game out. It's it's pretty decent. But they make it very polished as long as it goes. <laughs> um, I've got... I, I'm trying to come up with like a la- the last couple weird ones so that we can go to time. Yeah. Um, EverQuest. EverQuest uh, used to be banned in Brazil because you could choose to be evil. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. I mean, when you have a country... It took uh. 10 years for this ban to be to be overturned. Just up until EverQuest was no longer needed. <laughs> um, there is... Uh, uh, Valkyrie Drive is, is banned in a fuckload of countries. Okay. Uh, because because of of various reasons depending on the country um yeah, yeah. some people think that it's because of of the two sisters that seem like they're into each other mm. uh so, some countries do it based on that some countries do it because they're two girls uh there is there's obviously plenty of countries where any depiction of homosexuality is banned entirely like russia um yeah, yeah. oh russia for obvious reasons uh, the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 uh, oh. was was, was uh, removed from the game, and uh, the the No Russian mission does not appear in the Russian version of you, of Modern Warfare 2. You don't say. Um, you don't say. And it also didn't ever even come out for the PS3 or the 360. Oh. Um. 
and uh the the uh modern warfare reboot uh mm -hmm. Uh, was never released on disc in Russia, and Sony uh, refuses to sell it digitally on PlayStation 4. I don't know why specifically PlayStation 4. That was just what my research came up with. Yeah. Um, but that was that was an interesting one. And then obviously now you have a whole lot of games that uh, a lot of publishers are refusing to release in Russia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For the obvious reason that uh, the the invasion of Ukraine is is ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things uh, with Russia that I'm surprised they get as much as they do. But you know, uh, now. If you're a Russian, just go ahead, steal all your media. That's the only way you're going to be fucking getting it. Um, LA Noir is banned in Saudi Arabia because of uh, extreme impact violence and nudity. I get the nudity. There, yeah. There's a lot of uh, uh, topless corpses in that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know that I get extreme impact violence. Like you Bro, see, have you seen those faces? Those did some some violence on my eyes. I <laughs> I've played this game many times. La Noire is one of my favorite games. It, um, it's a good game. It, it's just that there are some of those faces where it's like, bro, I get it. He's lying. Just um, let me down. Uh, it, it didn't get it didn't get unbanned until 2017. Yeah, um, I think but that's just one of the I just releases. I don't I don't know what like it's not remotely as violent as a lot of other games on that list. No, um, it, it, it's a very slow plotting game for what it is. And in fact, for the majority of the game, you are encouraged to not do violence. Yeah. Um, you're you're investigating murders, but like, is that is that supposed to be bad? Am I? Are you not supposed to be investigating murders? I, I, I guess, don't know. I guess I could see them like, oh no, you're seeing corpses and uh, different countries, of course, different religions uh, have things where depict depiction of corpses are bad. So I get that but any any weird ones you got before we move on uh i think the weirdest ones always end up being like no i i don't because because the one that came up to my mind and i know uh ryuji would come out well, well ryuji and probably pyre would both come out to slap me would be doki doki literature club where is is uh, doki doki banned doki, somewhere it, it it got heavily censored a lot of places, and I think it, it did end up getting banned in some countries. I just don't remember where. I don't remember this. I'm because, looking this up now. Because it's the uh, the only Monica stuff. And I'll leave it at that for people who haven't played that game yet. I, I unfortunately got heavily spoiled. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. Leave, leave me alone with that. Eventually yeah. I'll sit down and I'll freaking do it but yeah yeah that, that's my, my thing is that you know i was we were online when that game got very popular and every fucking youtuber was fucking playing that game yep uh all right yep. um so with 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 that little mini rabbit hole uh yeah, 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 being yeah. wrapped up uh we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back we're gonna jump down a much deeper rabbit hole called I couldn't think of a second thing to fill 40 minutes with. So we're going to talk about the thing that's been consuming my life for the last three months. Uh, find out what that is after the break. We'll be right back. Got it. Welcome back, everybody. In the first half of this week's episode, we talked about games banned around the world in wake of the news that Callisto Protocol is not going to be coming out in Japan mm -hmm. because it is simply two body parts, gory, splattery, bloody, violent. Mm -hmm. Can't have it. Can't do it. Uh, and in the second half of this week's podcast, I'm going to once and for all prove that I can talk about whatever I want because it's my show and not yours. Mm -hmm. And I am going to take you down the rabbit hole that I have spiraled down personally for the last three months or so. Okay. Um, and I'm going to start with a question, uh, and it's a leading question because I already kind of know the answer, but the viewers probably don't. So, Nate, mm -hmm. what do you know about Star Wars? Uh, I know a lot. I know about the Force. I know about midichlorians. I know about Jar Jar Binks. I know. <laughs> uh, so I, I guess some of my background for Star Wars before I let you spiel off into your own little thing. Sure. Uh, I you know a, me so well. I'm a big fan of Star Wars, particularly less so the movies, more so the extended universe, uh, particularly the video games, extended universe, along with some of the books. 
uh, um, what are now categorized into the, the Legends. Legends. Uh, which are there's a fantastic series of books there. Uh, which one were you wanting to talk about? I mean, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about, but uh, <laughs> I want to I want to establish myself as well. Um, so I <laughs> uh, I am I am a pop culture junkie in general. <laughs> um, Star Wars uh, I've I've had in my life since I was a kid. My dad yeah. took me to see the Phantom Menace when it came out. Uh, I've obviously I've watched all the movies um, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just going to I'm going to say it right right here and now. So anybody that wants to get off this train, uh, I'm just going to rip the bandaid off. Uh, episode eight is my favorite one. Uh, any, That's anybody, a that, anybody that anybody that anybody that wants to to yell at me for that uh, can can feel free to. Uh, I'll be too busy gearing up for uh, watching uh, Knives Out 2 at Christmas directed and written by Ryan Johnson uh and that, and that is a choice sir that yeah. is a real choice because yeah. i i don't hate a I, I it's really one don't. of those things where where the backlash to a thing that i really liked was so intense that honestly it just made me indignantly like it more just to spite people yeah and i eventually convinced myself that it was my favorite one <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna put a, a fucking pin in that because i do want to talk more about eight um, but go on yeah, uh, this this obviously this just this yeah this discourse has kind of played out. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. um, my boyfriend my boyfriend is also a a fan of of all the films we watched. We actually watched all three of the sequel trilogy together for the first time. Uh, I I still to this day cite uh, the Rise of Skywalker is the worst movie I've ever paid money to see. Um, and he grew up reading quite a lot of. Uh, the extended universe uh, books. Okay. Uh, he's got he's got like the whole X Wing series on his oh. shelf right now, um, and he's a, he's a diverse reader. He was not like a specific nerd for any one kind of thing, but something that kind of inspired me was so in uh, 2014 Disney acquires Lucasfilm, mm -hmm. and the next year they announce that uh one or well it was before that but like in 2014 they started really publicly kicking around the idea of making more star wars movies and then the next year they're like hey you know these hundreds of books of largely uh mediocre to bad quality uh yeah. that that a lot of people really hate uh yeah, especially yeah. all the ones that are set after episode six yeah, yeah. Uh, all of the ones that are set after episode six yeah those are actually going to get in the way of us doing like these movies and whatever else we want to do yeah. so yeah. they took everything everything that yeah. had been released uh before uh before 2015 and branded it all under star wars, wars legend Legends. and this does include material which had previously been uh, officially canon, like yep. uh, the Force Unleashed games had yep. previously been officially declared canon on the level of the movies. They are not. Yep. Yep. Most of the books um, that um, had been released, a lot of them lined up. A lot of them didn't line up with each other and and conflicted because there really was not a central body that was governing like what things were going into what book. Yep, yep. Um, and so... The idea here was Disney wanted to start a new expanded universe yes. and have every single piece of that expanded universe be canon on the same level as the movies. Yes. So all of it fits into one, Neat you know, box. supposedly yeah. cohesive universe. Which is fine on paper, on paper. <laughs> and a couple of years ago, I was like, you know, there's not that many of these yet. What if I just like, what if I just caught up? And then I read a couple. I read mm -hmm. um this is gonna this is gonna earn me some hate, but I promise it's going somewhere. Okay. I right. read this and both of the sequels. Okay. Uh, Star Wars Aftermath is is a oh, very contentious book. Chuck Windig. <laughs> uh, for for two main reasons. Uh <laughs> firstly, because it's a very questionably written book, and secondly, because the author's kind of a douche. Um <laughs> But I read this when my standards were much lower, and I enjoyed it okay. I, I would rate it much lower than okay now, but the second one's still pretty good. I don't have a physical of it. I'm going to get it eventually. Mm -hmm. um, the second one's still pretty good. Uh, the third one was okay, but most of the interesting parts were not 
uh the the hero characters it was all villains and set up for the rest of the expanded universe yeah. post episode six yeah yeah uh because the the big important thing that happens in the aftermath trilogy is uh we get to see the beginnings of the empire the remnants of the empire turning into the first order yeah yeah um and so i i read those and then i kind of just put it down for a while mm -hmm. um and eventually so i i can say this now i used to work at uh target and i used to work order fulfillment there and so okay. my job all day was just walking around with my cart picking items off of shelves uh and for a good long while i was able to get away with wearing uh one earbud in that was covered up by my hair and listening yeah. to audiobooks and i was listening to a lot of assorted stuff for a while yeah, um yeah. eventually i discovered my library, my public library, has a shockingly diverse collection of Star Wars audiobooks. Like, yep. basically all of them. Yep. Uh, um, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, and for faithful users here, go ahead, check your library, because a lot of libraries do this. Yes. And it, it is 100% for free. You just sign up for a library card under their website, and you can get stuff. My website gives me access to Mango Languages completely for free. The full thing. Um... The app is called either Overdrive or Libby. You might have access to both of them. Yes. Um, you also have access uh, potentially to an app called Hoopla, which is mm -hmm. kind of the same deal, but for uh, comics and and you know assorted yeah, TV shows and movies. Like Most yeah. people use it for comics. I use it for I use it to read Star Wars comics. I yeah. I previously used it to read through all of the uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comics because they oh, had yeah. all of them. Um, but anyway, yeah, so. Towards the beginning of this year, I I just kind of decided to dive in, and I was like, okay, I, I want to go back to this. There's a fuckload more now than there oh, were yeah. when I first started oh, doing yeah. this. Oh, yeah. I want to know where to start. And so I looked up a bunch of uh, people's recommendations for books, and I found mm -hmm. one commonality. And that one commonality was Jumbo, at or near the very top was this book, Lost Stars by Claudia Gray. Okay, okay. So this is technically a young adult book. You wouldn't you wouldn't really know it by by either the content or the, the length because it's about as long as any of the 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 quote unquote adult books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but I knew very little about it. I was just like, okay, well, I don't really care if I'm going in blind. I what I'm looking for here is a good Star Wars book. It doesn't I don't necessarily have to have it be about one thing or another. Mm -hmm. um and so what lost stars is is it's effectively and this is this is very smart marketing and i'm impressed that they managed to pull it off with this quality because this was one of the books that came out in the lead up to the force awakens coming out yeah. and this book oh. is a lower decks retelling of the entire original trilogy accompanied by probably mm -hmm. the most believable romance in the star wars franchise period hmm um so it's a it's about basically two two kids who who grow up uh on on a well in in the time of the empire yeah um yeah. one of them grows up on a backwater planet one of them's from a rich family who migrates to that backwater planet because they're going to get good jobs there yeah. and uh they get uh bas basically on on uh the day that the the empire like really comes in full force uh to to supposedly help the community out they throw this big celebration the kids sneak sneak to the backstage because they want to see a starship and they yeah, get yeah. caught by Grand Moff Tarkin together <laughs> um, yeah and Check in. <laughs> he he quickly identifies because because they're being followed by bullies they stand up to bully the bullies uh who are who are obviously huge jerks yeah. and this kind of leads to them going to Imperial Starfighter Academy together yeah. Oh, um, that's good. That's real good. Yeah. Except, mm -hmm. uh, just as they're about to uh, graduate, like they're they're all doing they're all doing individual things. Yeah. yeah um, yeah. and they make a bunch of friends. I love I love the whole cast of this book. But okay, like okay. the thing that really sold me on this was uh, one of their friends uh, in the Imperial Starfighter Academy is from Alderaan. Yeah. <laughs> And then that happens. Oh. Um, and and this is like 
the whole book is because of uh, because of what the original trilogy was especially from the perspective of the empire yeah. is is so one of them sees this as as holy shit this is way too much like yeah i don't see how uh, how a, a crime on this scale could possibly uh be for the greater good of anything they yeah. just killed billions of people all at once yep i'm done i'm i'm finding a way to 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 get out of here yeah uh i don't really care what happens after that uh because they didn't know that there was a, a rebellion yet but no no and the other one is like i mean they must have had a good reason right like there were terrorists like they they keep talking about all the terrorists mm. and you know we we watched we watched the organas get arrested and yeah. you know i keep hearing this new like like the, all, all the things that this massive battleship can do and surely they must have built this for like the good of people right because the empire is all about peace and law and order yep yep and it is it like the whole book is just this absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. like philosophical battle between yeah. the two of them who have very strong feelings or like romantic feelings for each other but extremely diametrically opposed beliefs yeah. uh in 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 who they think are the good guys in this situation which is it's really cool cuz this is all by the way uh not not contradicting any canon because people forget that Luke says he wants to go to fucking star the Starfighter Academy, mm -hmm. uh, and that and that's the plan plan for a lot of those kids was that they get accepted into the academy, learn everything they can, steal a starship, and then defect the Rebel Alliance. And that's like the the idea of like people going to the Starfighter Academy with the intention of defecting comes up in a, in a couple different books. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to spoil any of that um oh, no. but uh yeah this this kind of like blew my mind like how good this book was yeah, um yeah. and i will say obviously not every book that i have read is as good as that of course um not. i I, 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 do, <laughs> I do currently hold up claudia gray herself as the single best author that that uh mm -hmm. disney has in their in their current authorship stable which is good because she's yeah. involved in a project that i'm going to get to in uh, a hot minute um, but I ended up reading a whole bunch of assorted books. I am currently, I think, twenty six books in in total. Okay, um, that makes sense. Because I've been I've been reading on my Kindle. Uh, any yeah. of them that have too long lines for digital copies, I will go to the library and I will physically check out. Uh, you know, old old school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to do that tomorrow morning with a couple of books that I'm having trouble tracking down. Um, but the the two ones that i want to to highlight uh, one of them i feel like you might have uh some some stuff to discuss about yeah um the title is inherently silly but yeah, the, the yeah. book is aware of it i i think i saw the cover this is uh, alphabet squadron yeah yeah i i haven't read it myself yet i, I want to but i haven't yet so Alphabet Squadron is about a a it, it's basically our new X-wing. It's mm -hmm. about a ragtag bunch of pilots who all come from different traumatic backgrounds, uh, who end up basically working for uh, the Rebellion's intelligence team under the mm -hmm. guise of being a military unit, all of whom pilot different ships. Yeah. Uh, yes, they are aware that this is a really strange way to put a squadron together. Uh, yeah. And that this means that they cannot do formations like anybody else can do. Okay. And it comes into it that they have to figure out how to how to effectively harmonize the functionality of all of their different ships because yeah. they all work differently and fly differently. Yeah. And hey, th it's like there's a theme here going on with with yeah. with how they have to to figure out how how the team can mesh together. I I really liked it. Um, well, well, but that means they have to get more into the X into the X, Y, and A wings. Though. Yes. Yes, which is which, and by a, the way, and is a B wing and a U wing, alphabet squad, because uh, each fucking each fucking ship has a different alphabet wing. <laughs> um, so this this one uh, was really good. Uh, I actually was inspired to read it because the author Alexander Freed uh -huh. also wrote the shockingly good tie-in to the original uh, 2015 oh. Battlefront, which had no plot. Uh, this is this is a really solid Star Wars war story uh, mm -hmm. called Battlefront Twilight Company. 
Um, and it it's very much a played straight war story. And yeah, yeah. something that I ended up really liking about Alphabet Squadron was taking the same themes that he wrote about in that book and yeah. deconstructing them because he had space for it. And that led me to the sequel, Shadow of Fall. Oh, this is currently God. the second best Star Wars book I have ever read. Um, because it basically takes the entire theme of military loyalty and devotion that we built up for for both of the other two books I just mentioned and mm. deconstructs the fuck out of it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the second half of this book I read entirely in one sitting, and it is unlike literally anything else I have read in this entire franchise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that is going to say that you haven't really read the legend stuff too 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 much not too deeply yeah. um to be fair my experience with legends burned me uh because i i had to read whatever books that i was given yeah, when i was yeah. a child and unfortunately the books that i was given had this had 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 these words on the side that you might recognize uh those words were legacy of the force oh legacy of the force that you they should have started you on jedi academy the thing that the thing that <laughs> ruined uh the legends the legends universe and Dude. was honestly probably a deciding factor in disney deciding to nuke the whole thing because Pro probably was yeah <laughs> <sighs> Oh. Um, so I haven't read the third, the third one yet. It's on my, it's on my to be read pile. I, I only recently started acquiring physicals of the ones that I've really liked. Um, and I'm, I'm hunting them down from like half price books and such. Um, but it's also because, so those are some of my favorites. They actually take place at around the same time as mm -hmm. the aftermath books right after episode six happens, because the, the plot of them is, is, uh, the, the, Squadron is is basically assigned to take down a, a an elite squadron of remnants of the Empire, uh, who who are all still theoretically loyal to whatever is left of the Emperor. Um, and this mm -hmm. is kind of where the deconstruction of military loyalty comes into play because it happens on both sides, which is really cool. because uh, we get to see quite a lot of 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 the other side in the second book. Um, but I have that on hold right now because mm -hmm. uh, there's a much more exciting thing happening in the Star Wars Extended Universe right now. Um, oh, so okay. have you heard anything about Project Luminous? No, not yet. I'm looking it up now, actually. So I can I can go into it if you want yeah, me to. Yeah. So one of the things that's been uh, pretty heavily scrutinized in, in all of the newer uh, Disney canon books uh, is the thing with the older extended universe is there was lots of space in it, like lots of empty room in the timeline for them to do huge things that were on the scale of the movies. Yes. And you just can't do that necessarily when you're working in a, sp in, in a time span of, I think, something in the realm of like 50 to 60 total years going from episode one to episode nine. Yes, yes. Um, so they go up till uh, Solo's kids... It might be adults. it might be a little a little more than that, but yeah. Um, once once the sequel trilogy came out, it obviously it goes directly against a very significant portion of like the headline titles of the old extended extended universe. Mm -hmm. But also, mm -hmm. Disney is really unwilling to currently do anything past episode nine. Uh, yeah. Really, anything past episode seven. They they they're they're kind of taking the sequel trilogy and freezing it in carbonite because they don't want to talk about it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so they put together a whole bunch of authors uh, and gave them an idea. What if, because we can't go mm -hmm. forward and do anything big... We go back to the Republic. What if we go back? Is. Yeah, that's the High Republic, which is, um, if I remember correctly, supposed to be the original Republic. So even before the old Republic. So, um, the Old Republic as we knew it from the games and uh, the Bioware MMO that's still yes. ongoing and is the only ongoing piece of Legends media yes. is not canon. Yep. Um, and I, I do kind of understand that. Um, obviously, the the games have branching paths. It's really difficult yeah, yeah. to reconcile that with, with anything that's supposed to be happening uh, yes. in the far-flung future. But also, we haven't actually gone back that far yet, because the Old Republic is set 800 years, years before the events of The Phantom Menace. Yeah. Uh, 
phase one of the High Republic is 150 years before Phantom Menace. So yeah. we're still we're still significantly farther ahead than that in the timeline. Yeah. Um but these books have consumed my life so entirely. <laughs> really? Because because I haven't heard much about the High Republic stuff. Because uh, I I technically shut out a lot of Star Wars um, stuff after the Legend split, uh, which decanonized Knights of the Old Republic uh, one and two, which are fantastic games, and then they tried to bring them back into canon, but in worse ways. Well, they've they've kind <laughs> of been welding canon together. They, they um, have been, and, like, and and sometimes they do it by bringing in the original author. Like Timothy Zahn is yeah. uh, just finished his second trilogy of Thrawn books that are that are canon now. Um, oh. I've only read the yes. first of his of of the new Thrawn books, but it was extremely good. Yeah, yeah. The, the Thrawn books were were always high held in high regards. I personally love the the Jedi Academy, which followed Jason and Jaina Solo, which I know Jason and Jaina aren't the most loved things, but but back no. then but back then when they were still in the academy with everything, I, I think those books were really, really good. Uh. So the thing with the the High Republic books is so far pretty much all of them have been some variety of either cosmic horror or tragedy, but Ooh. what I really like about them is it, like, so the, the first, the first major book in, yeah. in, in phase one is this one. It's light of the Jedi by Charles soul. And okay. that title I think is pretty indicative of what we're really going for here, which yeah. is let's face it. Episode one and the whole prequel trilogy kind of ruined the coolness of the Jedi, like as as mythic figures mm -hmm. who were like cosmic do-gooders. Yeah and, yeah. and the prequel trilogy set up that like the Jedi like just can't go to therapy ever. And they yeah. can't fuck and they can't they can't do anything that isn't extremely <laughs> rich. <laughs> that, these are these are these are these are things that actually get something that I really liked about um a different Claudia Gray book uh that she wrote uh, -huh. uh just before she she really jumped in on on this project because she's one of their stable. Yeah. Uh it was called Master and Apprentice. It's a book that takes place uh just before episode one uh, uh Obi Wan and Qui Gon with with Qui-Gon and and Obi-Wan as master and apprentice obviously yeah. and we get a lot of good juxtaposition juxtaposition of yeah. uh the way that the Jedi order operated yeah. you know between this and the way that we see them in the prequel trilogy yeah. where they're shooting themselves in the foot every other minute yeah and, and, um, it's, and it's just so simple like like simple things that kill that original trilogy, man. Like why can't they ever realize Darth Sidious is just in the room going, <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, yes, no. <laughs> it, you know, my my favorite gift to post into anything is always the no, no, no. <laughs> the the thing with the High Republic books is that they make Jedi exciting again because I'm I'm like. Episode one ruins their mysticism, yeah. and then the sequel trilogy just kind of makes you exhausted by the very idea of them. Yes, uh, and a lot of it is, like, they have some cool ideas, like, and that's why I want to talk about Jedi later. Uh, 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 you, you know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh, later, um, is because it brings up some cool ideas uh, which has been touched upon previously, like in Knights of the Republic, like the gray side of the force. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't even mind Luke kind of being like, you know what, fuck the Jedi. They're all assholes and idiots. Like, I don't mind that. Because they were. They <laughs> yeah. they, they directly caused the Empire. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, like, like there, there are things in that movie that unfortunately don't work in the end because it feels like the entire sequel trilogy is two directors waving their dicks at each other you know what i mean i mean i don't know that i know that i i i don't think that ryan johnson was really waving his dick i think that jj abrams watched episode eight and was like that's not how i would have written it what if i just what if i just do it anyway yeah yeah did it abrams was like no 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 <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think ryan johnson was just like i have some cool yeah. ideas for star wars let's try them <laughs> and, and and he and he pulled from again the uh the extended universe because mm -hmm. the dyad in the force is is looked upon uh thing which is why unfortunately they go does, does that mean ray and 
and Kylo Ren are are actually related, which uh, episode nine, yeah, they're related. Yeah. No. What? Yeah. Raise a Palpatine. Kylo Ren is a Skywalker. What are you talking yes. about? And Palpatine himself is Anakin Skywalker's oh, dad. You're, you're going. You're going by that thing that isn't canon. It it it, it says so in the movies. Movies are canon, man. You you can't erase specific parts of canon because you like to see two two thingos kiss. I don't I don't care about them kissing. I no, don't. I don't. I don't either. I actually think uh, Ray was was much more exciting uh, when she was nobody rather than a Palpatine. Well, yeah, obviously. I actually just listened to um, the audiobook of of uh, Spark of the Resistance, which is a a middle mm-hmm. grade book that's just kind of a cute little side adventure set between Episode Eight and Nine. Yeah. Of of uh ray poe and rose respond like like flying the millennium falcon and responding to a distress call on on a planet that's yeah. under siege by the first order yeah and it's just like no it's a fun adventure i like this why did we stop doing why didn't we do this Be- why did we why did we not do it i i don't know why because i feel like rose and gets a bad thing because we don't get to see a lot of her in the movie and when we get to see her it feels like she's dragging finn around to where to where he can't do anything i know finn was a very um fan favorite at that point and we all wanted to see him become a jedi and we didn't so i I get it i mean he doesn't ever actually explicitly say he's force sensitive that 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 was a thing that jj abrams made up because he forgot to to rewrite a scene where he was going to confess his love for ray yeah (laughs) I, i mean i mean Nobody actually should has to say, "Oh, I'm force sensitive." Like technically, Han Solo is is a force sensitive because of his bad feelings. The force sensitivity is is very very vague. <laughs> well, like something that uh, so come you know, kind of yeah. coming back to this for a second is Rebounding. something that I really like about the the way that the Jedi Order is written in the High yeah. Republic books is like we got we got much closer to the the free-willing magical space hippie thing that they had going on in the mythology of the original trilogy and a lot of the jedi literally feel the force in different ways like one of them feels it as an ocean that he has to to navigate the currents of Mm -hmm. uh the avar chris this uh her right here yeah that night uh, hears the force as a song oh and so her, when she's trying to detect people with the force she's looking for their notes in the song and i think that that's just like a really cool and creative idea mm-hmm. because like it it very much engages with the idea of the force as space religion yes yes uh, instead of the force as a thing that you are just born with because your family was important yeah yeah Be- because like bacteria liked you yeah yeah <laughs> like <laughs> God, I, I can I can talk more about the back to the mitochondria, uh, mitochondrians, mitochondrians. <laughs> well, the, the powerhouse of the force. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you wanted to talk about uh, Fallen Order, I believe. Uh, yeah, Fallen Order uh, is clearly a really really good game, and that is taking place. I believe uh, sometime after uh, episode three, The Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, it's but, a couple years after episode yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but definitely before four. Um, and it follows um, Shameless's uh, actor, I can't remember his name, um, on a quest to be kind of, to kind of see if he can save some of the, the last Jedi who are being picked up by the Empire. Well, no. So th- this was this was kind of my problem because I I only recently played through Fallen Order. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the the driving the driving uh, MacGuffin of the of the entire what plot of the game is a a holocron that contains a list of force sensitive children around yeah. the galaxy. Yeah, and he's supposed to be picking them up, right? That's, that's and no, he's just trying to find the holocron, which is locked in a vault oh. on the first planet you go to. Oh, okay. Um, okay. My problem with this is the moment that you hear that premise that you know that there's a foregone conclusion. Oh, yeah, yeah. You which is we're not up. doing shit with this list. Uh if we find it, we're 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 getting rid of it because 
if if we found all the force sensitive children and reestablished the Jedi Order, the whole rest of the movies don't happen. Yeah, um, <laughs> it can't happen. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm hoping that for the sequel they find a way to avoid doing that because it made the plot kind of frustrating because the driving force of it was you're looking for a thing that you know you're not going to find in the way that the character thinks he's going to find it. Well, yes, I I think there are still interesting ways to do it, like to have like a foregone conclusion that the the player knows about, but not the characters in it. There's interesting ways to pull that off. Sure, I don't think that this pulled it off. I think that they did a very like well, the, the 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 end of this game is hilariously anticlimactic. Because uh, what is it that it's it's the fight against uh, the fight against the second sister? Yeah, the fight against the second sister that leads into the the Darth... not fight against Vader. Yeah, the not fight against Vader. Uh, you make it out with the holocron. Yeah, and you get back to the ship. Yeah, 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 and and. Uh, and everybody is just like, okay, cool, now we can do the thing. And Cal is like, actually, I've been thinking about it, and we yeah. shouldn't do the thing. And then credits roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, cool, I worked the whole game for this, it, and and it accidentally <laughs> fell into the trap of this the, This yeah. plot would have happened exactly the same way if I yeah. hadn't done anything, because yeah. it would still be locked in a vault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, technically, in in theory, Vader might have been able to 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 force his way into it. <laughs> there's not even any. There's not even even any Empire presence on on that planet before the end of the game. They only go mm. there because they know you're investigating there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that is true. I don't know. I, I like Fallen Order a lot. I think its gameplay holds up better than its story. I think it, it's very clear since I didn't really remember. Mm -hmm. the, the the main main plot that i i was for sure like yeah no wait he's going around each planet to pick up the four sensitive kids right and it's like no um which i think would have been cool if, if they would have done it like behind the scenes and, and but cal making the same fucking mistakes that the jedi order always have or something maybe like or even you know we're, we don't even, know what the sequel is going to be about so or even him failing and it ends up in the hands of the empire and they just go around nuking for sensitive kids but like that whole idea of of we can't really do big things that would affect the universe on that scale because the movies still have to happen yeah. is the thing that makes the high republic so cool like they yeah, finished yeah. they finished the first phase of books earlier this year uh -huh. phase two just started with a book that came out a couple of weeks ago uh -huh. that takes place a hundred a hundred years before this so oh. You still don't know what the fuck's going to happen because of how much of history is is, is currently unwritten. Yeah, um, yeah. And they they end phase one on a massive cliffhanger uh, that 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 they're clearly not going to resolve for like two years. And I'm just yeah. like, I'm I'm just so impressed by the audacity that this that this took. And I'm I'm here for it because all the books have been so good. I'm just along for the ride now. <laughs> yeah. No, you actually made me interested because I I haven't been interested in Star Wars in a while in a long time. Uh, you know, between the legend split, the everything, like like you said, I just didn't find Star Wars exciting anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I tried my best. I sat down with Lego Star Wars, and it just the the magic and the love wasn't there. Uh, but you know, you've you've at least made me interested in checking out at least the High Republic stuff because beforehand I had heard people acting like it was. Some people saying it was really good. Some people saying it was really bad. It just, you know, how the well, culture I mean, wars it's, go. It's one of those things where it got a huge hate dumb before the books had even come out, just from people that were that were still pissy about the the Kotor games that were only kind of canon to begin with being decanonized. Yeah. Well, it, I, it goes into it because Kotor gets a very unsatisfying ending for both Revan and um, the the Outcast Jedi. Uh, because their story gets uh, written out in a fucking comic book or something. I can't remember what it was. Was it a short story or a comic book? And it's just like, oh yeah, those characters that you like, they're they're dead now. Come play the MMO. I just so my my thesis statement for all of this because just because we're running low on time yes. is the old expanded universe was this mammoth, gargantuan. Other words for big, bloated mess. Yeah, that, that, 
there 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 was a ton of stuff but the 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 overwhelming opinion of it especially in the last decade or so of, of its existence was that a lot of it was just absolutely trash uh i think once chewbacca died most people most people jumped ship um you're not gonna stay for lobaka <laughs> no but you know who i will stay for is is him my precious we have a wookie jedi we have yeah. a Wookiee Jedi again. They said yeah. they weren't yeah. allowed to anymore, but we did it. Um, I, I, given how much of it that I have read, and I have read books that were disappointing, yeah. uh, including ones that said that they were really important, like Resistance Reborn mm. uh, was half of a really good book that then had to spend the entire second half setting up for episode nine. Uh. Um, I think that the proportion of books that are good to great to amazing is significantly higher than it used to be, especially since the authors that are writing stuff together are actually fucking talking to each other now. Which is a uh, <laughs> because because that was the thing that ruined Legacy of the Force was that Karen yeah. Travis didn't want to participate in the group project. Uh <laughs> so yeah. I encourage anyone that hasn't yet and is even remotely interested to check it out, uh, yeah. especially these books. If you want to feel excited by Star Wars again, this yeah. is an excellent place to start. Again, Light of the Jedi. It's probably not going to be what you're expecting it to be, but I, I love this book so much. And the the following the following books are all even better than that. Yeah. Hey, man, all I want is my space wizards to be space wizards again. And you will get that. I, I'm so excited to say that you will get that. I want to thank you guys at home for watching uh, or listening. S excuse me. I'm I'm reading off the wrong script. Thank you guys yeah. for listening and watching uh, to another episode of the Strip Pixels podcast. We post every Tuesday on your podcast app of choice and on the Noisy Pixel YouTube channel. Uh, what do you guys think of the Callisto Protocol getting banned? Is there anything that we missed in, in our in our discussion on banned games that you want to bring up because there's all kinds of weird nonsense going on? Uh, have you touched the Star Wars books? Are you are you going to check the, any of them out because of my recommendation? Because I gave you several of them that I thought were really good. Let us know in the comments on YouTube. If there's anything you'd like us to talk about in a future episode, you can leave a comment under this video or talk to us on Twitter. You can find me, Colin, at, at the Arcane Ranger and Nate at, at less than Nathan, uh, or the site itself at, at Noisy Pixel News. The Stray Pixels podcast is brought to you by NoisyPixel.net. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to bring you the latest news, reviews, previews, podcasts, and more. Please join our community Discord server to come talk nerdy with us and like subscribe and follow to keep up with our future content and we will see you guys next week and that's game see you everybody <laughs> peace